Hey, today I'll be talking about episodes 39 through 41 of Rui's Royal Love. The Empress's body is not even cold yet, but thoughts have already begun to turn to who will be the next Empress. Jia gets it into Chin's head that the Empress's funeral is going to be the deciding moment. Whoever can step up and show that they can run things will be the standout for the next leader of the harem. So even though the Emperor specifically asked Rui to handle things, Chun tells Rui to leave all the funeral arrangements to her. She's just lucky that Rui doesn't really care because we all know that all Rui has to do is ask and the Emperor will be like, hell yeah, I want you as my Empress. Chun, wh which one's she? CSI Imperial Palace checks Su Lian's body and finds Chun's hairpiece. They conclude that she was most likely murdered. Just to recap, Chun dropped this hairpiece, Jia picked it up, had her maid murder Su Lian, and obviously planted the hairpiece to make Chun look guilty. And it works! Chun's hairpiece is brought to the Emperor as evidence. The Emperor has like a photographic memory when it comes to these little trinkets. It makes total sense that the women would remember every little thing he gives them, but he's always like, oh yeah, I remember when I gave her this thumbtack under the full moon on December 13th. <laughs> anyway, by following Jia's advice and taking charge of the funeral, Chun is now making herself look even more guilty, like she was waiting for the Empress's death so she could take over her position. <laughs> By the way, with the death of the Empress comes the second stage of this drama, marked by the Emperor's transition from a fresh-faced baby ruler to a walrus mustachioed man. In case you're curious, there are four stages, all marked by the Emperor's facial hair. Stay tuned. Chun continues to take the lead once they get back to the palace. The funeral is a multi-day affair that has the consorts, children, and servants kneeling and crying for hours on end. Chun makes sure that she is seen handling everything in an effort to look like the best candidate for the next empress, not realizing that it makes her look over-eager and opportunistic. She's also pushing for her son, the third prince, to do more in the proceedings, even though the older first prince is still alive and well. She wants this so badly, but she just does not know how to plan. Unlike Jia, who of course also has her eye on the Empress position. Jia doesn't see Rui as a big threat because Rui's childless and has got that whole family history with her aunt, the previous Empress. Which seems really short-sighted of the usually incredibly sharp Jia. I mean, Rui is childless, has that whole family thing, and still outranks you, so doesn't that tell you something? Jia is not new to the palace. It seems crazy to me that she wouldn't factor in how much the Emperor loves Rui and how much that matters in the grand scheme of things. Anyway, at the very least, she considers Chun the bigger threat for now. Chun has three sons and a princess, plus the Empress recommended her to take over her position before she died, so fair enough, I guess. Hailan is just begging Rui to do a little plotting, but Rui doesn't really want to be the Empress. And I mean, yeah, what good did it do Langhua in the end? First Prince comes to visit Rui and Hailan. He's a straight up man now. He actually has his own son. It's obvious that it's always bothered Chun how even after years of taking care of him, First Prince still considers Rui his mother. Notice he calls Chun, Chun niang niang. Chun niang niang an. which is what princes call consorts who aren't their biological mothers. He always just calls Rui mother though. The thing is, Chun definitely plays more importance on her biological sons, so of course First Prince never really bonded with her. If you don't treat him as your real son, why would he see you as his real mother? Rui, on the other hand, has always been 100% sincere with him, which makes the next part all the more heartbreaking. Rui and Hailan are heading back from grieving the Empress one day, and they overhear First Prince talking to his wife. He tells her not to spend too much time with Chun. He says the only way up is to suck up to Rui, since she doesn't have any kids, making it easy to manipulate her by tugging on her maternal heartstrings. He makes it clear that any appearance of love is all pretense. All that matters is becoming the crown prince. And he's so mean to his wife. Ugh. I want to be cool and say I saw this coming, but I really didn't. Logically, I know it would have been nearly impossible for him to still be the good kid that he was, and yet I bought it hook, line, and sinker. I was smiling ear to ear when Yong Huang reappeared as this well-adjusted, caring adult just so, so happy that the things he went through as a child didn't mess him up for life. This scene just stabbed me right in the heart. It's one of maybe five scenes that I really cried watching. And I think the reveal was done so well because you go through the realization at the same time that Rui does. I'm right there with you, this sucks. The difference in thinking between Rui and Hailan also becomes more apparent as Rui is heartbroken, but Hailan is pretty much like, yeah, girl, that's life in the palace. Hailan even tries to turn this into a lesson for why Rui should become the empress, but Hailan, can we have a minute to grieve? 
In any case, it doesn't make Rui want the position. If anything, it makes her more afraid of it and how it could change her. It seems like the Empress position is in the bag for Chun, so all the girls at the bottom of the ladder are kissing her feet, especially Yen Wan, who is still disliked by pretty much everyone. And Chun is just loving the attention. I really love this scene where she's alone with her maid and complaining, Oh, it's so hard being so powerful. Oh, massage my shoulders, they're so sore from carrying all this responsibility. All I can think is, remember when you were piss your pants scared to talk to a 17 year old? What makes you think you could handle being the Empress? Hailan gets tired of waiting for Rui to make a move and makes one of her own. She's walking with Yongqi and deliberately stops with an earshot of Chun Sun, the third prince. She tells Yongqi that the Empress's coffin will be moved the next day, and no matter what, he should not cry. The Emperor will be impressed that he can remain calm while everyone else is drowning in tears, and this will make him look like a better choice for Crown Prince. As planned, they're overheard by the third prince. And they're not done yet. She then visits the Emperor and again uses her son as a pawn. Yongqi mentions that he overheard first prince and his wife talking about Wan Li, an emperor from the Ming Dynasty, and his sons. At that time in history, it was a matter of course that the eldest son would become the crown prince, but the emperor Wan Li preferred his third son, leading to a lot of neglect for his first prince and a lot of scheming between the brothers. Yongqi says he overheard first prince comparing himself to the first prince in the story, neglected by his father despite being his eldest, which would make third prince the scheming brother in the story, trying to take the throne from his older brother. As they leave, Hailan makes sure to tell her son not to spill a word of this to Rui, which I hate so much, but let's leave it till the review. Third Prince goes home and tells Chun about Hailan's no crying plan. She decides they should do the same. I won't blame the kid for falling for this trick, but Chun, think for a second, how does this seem like a good idea? Then Jia makes her move. She goes to pray at the First Prince's biological mother's tomb, where she knows he will be coming by later. She alludes to his mother's death being more than an accident. When he asks her to clarify, she's like, No, no, I couldn't, it would only cause pain. The Empress killed your mom. Jia says the Empress was jealous that his mom gave birth to the first prince and killed her so she wouldn't threaten her position. I guess that sounds like the Empress we know, and there have been rumors about it for a while, but no official confirmation that that actually happened yet. So on the final day of the funeral, for their own reasons, neither the first prince nor the third prince cry. I am forever impressed with all these people who I know hated the Empress forcing out tears. So anyway, the Emperor takes notice and, already suspicious of infighting between his sons, asks why they aren't crying. They both say it's because they want to be strong for him. He is not impressed. <laughs> Chun doesn't have to force out tears anymore, she's really crying, begging him not to misunderstand their intentions, insisting that they were only thinking of him. She even throws First Prince under the bus, saying Third Prince is probably only copying his older brother. The Emperor gets so angry he kicks her too. He tells everyone that both First and Third Prince are officially barred from ever becoming the Crown Prince. Holy shit. Just like that, the two oldest viable Crown Princes are out of the running, leaving Jia's Fourth Prince as the oldest and most highly ranked. Well played. Though she really was helped by the fact that Hailan was putting in effort at the same time. Not only getting third prince not to cry, but using her son to make the emperor more suspicious of the first prince. They kind of worked together without ever actually working together. We already knew that Jia was an evil mastermind, but wow has Hailan become insanely good at this. And she's aided by the fact that the emperor really underestimates her. He never suspects she might have coached her son into faking that story because, oh, you're just sweet little Hailan, you don't know anything about politics. <laughs> And she plays into that to protect herself. Year after year, she's become so jaded. From that conversation she had with Rui to using her son, who is still so young, it's clear that she no longer has any qualms about doing whatever she thinks is necessary. And seeing how Chun treats Rui now, she's decided that getting rid of her is necessary. It's just so sad to see how willing she is to corrupt her son to achieve her goals. As with all kids, it's hard to know how much of their personality is learned or natural, but Fifth Prince is kind of terrifying. How is he memorizing all of his lines and acting so convincingly? Seven-year-olds shouldn't be this good at lying. Hailan is raising a little psychopath, and it's all fun and games until he's wearing your wigs and stabbing people to death. And now for a look at the book. While Hailan is still the more eager one, Book Rui actually does want to become the Empress, but she's still a bit hesitant and definitely more emotional than Hailan. 
Just after they overhear Yong Wang talking about faking his love and Hailan is pretty much unaffected, Ri asks her how she can be so cold. Hailan tells her about her youth. Her father fell out of love with her mother and began seeing another woman. Her mother couldn't take it and in a rage ended up stabbing him to death and then killing herself, leaving Hailan orphaned. Thanks to that experience, she's never believed that love is real. That is, until she met Ri Yi. The scene ends with some pretty scary dialogue. Ri was speechless for a while and could only let out a soft sigh. But Hailan, if you don't believe in anything, then wouldn't everything be meaningless? What is there to trust? Hailan smiled slightly. I trust you. She leaned closer to Rui. So no matter what I do, you have to trust me too. Rui nodded gently. A bit of rain fell onto her. Yes, I'll always trust you. I just knew Hailan had to have some kind of tragic backstory for her to be the way that she is. At this point, it does seem like Rui maybe wants to be a better person, but Hailan is completely twisted, and they're so dependent on each other that there's no way that they'll separate. At the end of their conversation, Ri says she will fight to be the empress, but makes Hailan promise that she won't hurt Yong Huang. Then Hailan does the whole thing with her son and the emperor anyway, which is why they end up fighting. So in the novel, Ri doesn't really have a problem with the scheming, but she does still love Yong Huang and is hurt that Hailan would go after him even after she specifically asked her not to. Finally, this is pretty irrelevant, but it really made me laugh. The Empress Dowager starts seeing more of Chun since it looks like she will be the next Empress. After Chun leaves one day, this is what the Empress Dowager says to her maid. In the past, I didn't see much of noble consort Chun. I thought of her as a bit of an idiot, quiet, not much of a talker, but virtuous and able. Now that I've had a chance to properly take my measure of her, she really is a moron. Talking with her is exhausting. Till next time, thanks for watching.